Um, I didn't start an organization. Uh, the effort was to respond to those in need. Um, to paraphrase what somebody else said, uh, love is the answer. Um, to love one's neighbor is to care. Is to care when sometimes there's not enough response. Back in 1997, at Newman Hall, they had a group called Loaves and Fishes, which still runs today. Um, and I was part of that uh, back then. And I saw there was a need to go beyond what was comfortable. Go out into the streets. Don't just invite them into our parish hall, but go out in the streets where the folks are, where the need is, and bring the need out on a timely basis. We started out with, uh, with coffee and steel donuts. Coffee graduated to hot chocolate. The steel donuts became a little fresher. And then we started making soup. We did that the first winter. It lasted, well, I guess about three or four months. And then we expanded. We decided to start doing breakfast in the absence of breakfast uh, here in Berkeley. Um, we stepped forward and said, well, we can do breakfast. And a lot of people told us, you're crazy. You don't want to do it in People's Park. Too much problem. And we said, well, that's where they are, and that's where we can be. So the first time we came out was in March of 98. We did breakfast for 30 people, or thereabouts. We did it in one location. Uh, last Sunday or the Sunday before, I think we did 197 people. We did it in two locations, so uh, we went downtown as well for a second location, and now we feed people in two locations. And feed them a full breakfast, not just cereal and a piece of toast and a cup of coffee, but uh, a full breakfast. We help people that perhaps have lost their dignity, or people that they're not given dignity when they come in contact with the, uh, with the general public. Um, we try to help out, we try to uh, reach out to the mentally ill those that have problems with drug and alcohol, uh, those that have problems with behavior problems. And these people, uh, many, uh, many of the problems overlap. People have a number, two or three challenges sometimes. And we try to do it without any bias. Uh, people ask us, why do we do it? Well, we have a compulsion to love one another. Um, Christ told us that we must love one another. It's not just something we picked up. Uh, love yourself. Love others. Love others as much as you love yourself. Put them on that same par. Don't give them second or third or fourth class treatment. Give them the same treatment that you would give somebody you really love, like your brother, your sister, your mom, your dad, uh, your child, maybe even your cat. But sometimes it's hard to give love because you don't understand, because people are different, because they don't look so good or they don't smell so good or they uh, they have a behavior problem that you have difficulty dealing with. Um, when people are treated without dignity, their value is seen as less. And that's an easy way for people to step away from their responsibility. We try to see this dignity in everybody and reinforce it. And when it's absent, we try to give it back to them, something they always needed to have. And if anything, as much as feeding them or throwing a blanket over their shoulder or giving them a shelter for the night, giving them dignity will give them the opportunity to perhaps leave homelessness if it can be done and further their life. We have a balance of both homeless and housed. Many of the people, uh, or some of the people that we see in our breakfasts, um, We've seen them move from uh, being homeless to being housed. Uh, when we see new people in line, I tend to walk the line, so to speak, and talk to the people, uh, walk along, see what's happening. When I see a new face, I say, well, where are you from? How's it going? Do you know where the meals are? I give them a, a card that lists all the meals in Berkeley, not just Catholic worker stuff, but, but everybody's meals. So at least they'll be able to find out where to eat. In Berkeley, we're very lucky. There are many meals. Uh, but I tell them when they do go and move from their homeless situation to housed, give me a call. Give me one of my cards. Give me a call and we'll bring you over a couple sacks of uh, groceries, get you jump-started there because I know, we know there's going to be a need. 
go and pay for housing and it's going to eat up all your money, whatever you may have, you may not have enough left for housing or left for food. And if you pay everything for housing, or almost every bit of it uh, is gone in that direction, you don't eat for a, for a couple of weeks for a month. So it's either groceries from us or coming to one of the meals. So this is how we connect with people. Look for those new faces. Uh, try to uh, put them in a dignified situation rather than we're just offering you as a charity here, eat. Uh, sort of a food plus hospitality with a, with a twist. Okay. For better, for worse. Um, it's a four-letter word. It's not the effort. It's, it's a little bit, you'll probably get at this. It's love. It takes love. Uh, it takes a lot of sacrifice. Um, I go down to the food bank almost every week and pick up whatever is there whatever is needed, whatever we can find. What we can't find there, we go over to the uh, restaurant supply and pick up our milk and our eggs and our, uh, our English muffins. It's, we are the only people who do the English muffins. Everybody else does sort of old crusty bread. We pick up real butter instead of margarine. And we have our hot chocolate formula, very secret. Everybody seems to like it, so we seem to be doing well there. Um, you're bringing it back here. Uh, taking phone calls from people when they call us, say, well, we have something to offer. A restaurant that opened up here oh, oh, about three weeks ago called us up and uh, they said, we have 125 pounds of fresh chicken. I said, great, I can't use 125 pounds of fresh chicken right now, but if you want to give it to me or offer it to me, I'll call you back in 30 minutes and I'll make it go someplace where it will go well. So I called around, couldn't get a hold of the food project, finally got hold of... Uh, Harrison House at the foot of uh, Gilman Street. Got a hold of somebody, luckily, somebody picked up the phone and said, I've got 125 pounds of fresh chicken. Are you interested? And they said, yes. So I called the restaurant back and the restaurant said, uh, great. I got over there uh, about five minutes after eight, picked up my chicken, uh, put it in the back of the van, ran it down to Harrison House, they put it in the refrigerator and I was back at Pete's Coffee at 8.30 having my coffee as I usually do every morning. That's how I started my day. Another place we get uh, a lot of our resource from, which has ever been so uh, much more important than just the food and the dough and that sort of thing, is the people that come out, whether it's people that pray for us, which is given short shrift, uh, those people that come out and actually serve, those people that come out and get up at 6.30 in the morning, show up at 7.30 for breakfast, and join us in our prayer circle. We pray, uh, we get ready for our meal, and then we dive in and we serve as I said, 150, 200 people for breakfast in the morning. Uh, the resource of people is very important. Without that, it's, it's very so very hard to do anything without enough resource of people. And then the dollars are important, of course, and the food donations are important. Um, and we manage and we survive. And because we start with prayer, we start our meals with prayer, uh, it is my feeling that uh, we have something reaching out to us, something very important. Uh, we used to call it or her or he, the Holy Ghost. Now they've been updated to the Holy Spirit. But I think this feeling of the Holy Spirit comes upon us uh, much the way the, the Holy Spirit came upon the apostles about 2,000 years ago, upon everybody. And it has had its effect, both on myself as well as all the workers.